CCF has been empowering girls since Scott Neeson started the organization in 2004. And it all begins by really providing a safe place for the girls that are rescued from these horrific conditions or they come in from the dump community. Uh, when I was 15 years old, I stopped to study because my family didn't have much money for support me. And I, start, uh, I study only grade three. In 2005, I collect the garbage for self. Uh, I work maybe in the morning until uh, evening. I, I can earn a little bit money, but I think that I, I didn't have no choice. Uh, in the garbage dump, it is very hot and very sting. I think that it is enough for me because I didn't have an education. Before I live in CSS, my family is so poor. I don't have a time to study, enough food. Uh, one day I met Scott and Scott said to me hello and then he asked me in Khmer, uh, do you want to study? One day I heard about CSF through a novel I came to interview at CSF and I was upset to, to study at CSF 6. The CCF girls are an incredible example of the resiliency of the human spirit. When you meet them, they are so alive, they're so joyous, they're all full of wonder and curiosity and excitement. And they, they don't suppress their past, they don't bury their past, but they are not defined by their past. Instead, they're defined by the bright life that they are living right now, the beautiful community they live in, and the future that they see is available to them. At CSF, I study English, computer, social study, and leadership. Uh, I learned about effective communications, public speaking, child management, goal settings, family management, and budgeting, and so on. I think that I changed a lot. Uh, before I cannot speak English, but right now I can communicate in English. Read and write my I feel confident, especially I feel that I am now a useful. I wish to use the knowledge I, that I learned to have a community and help the girl in community too. So we have so many community service projects that the girls get involved in. For example, the Tom Shoe Distribution, they go out to the provinces and distribute thousands of shoes to needy children. They manage and organize our granny program, so the grannies are taken care of, but also they collect their stories and their wisdom. We visit granny twice a week, and then we bring rice, money, fruit, and other medicine for them, make sure that they are doing okay. They uh, assist at the satellite schools and the teaching in the classroom, and they also uh, provide uh, food and run our food programs, feeding over 300 kids every single night from the community. And that's just a few of the things they do. In my free time, I help to teach older kids at CSFC. I love to help older people. Now, a day, I also go to teach the students in the community. Many students are bigger than me. I am very proud of myself. Scott also said he is proud of me. So there's all this really direct impact they have, but they're also really making a change in the community indirectly because they are seen as role models. The, um, the mothers look at these girls and they think, well, maybe I should take my children out of the dump and scavenging and put them in school because look how well these girls are doing. The other children look up to them. The girls that are at the same age, the teenagers, aspire to be like them. So they're a constant role model and a reminder to everyone in the community that something else is possible. In the future, I want to be a good designer and I want to open my own business like clothes designers. In the future, I want to be a doctor and a community leader. I hope I can self pull her life and support my community. I think the women can change the community and society through their involvement in education for all, learn about children's rights and women's rights. These girls, their education is academic and vocational, it's leadership, and it's always tied to community service to the community from which they came and the community that they're changing every single day.